emerging African entrepreneurs speak on the benefits of their sectors to Africa, as well as how their ideas can transform their various nations. Yes, um, my company is called Kingsmen and Grace Wars Limited, and um, we believe that ICT is the next most important element as far as development of Africa is concerned. If we must develop Africa, then we must invest in ICT. And that is our motivation. And that's why we're providing solutions, not just for the rich or for the few, but solutions for everybody. We're leveraging on the mobile phone and not just the smart mobile phone, any mobile phone. We're leveraging on any mobile phone that can make a call and send a text message and using that to provide financial solutions that will empower people, empower their business, empower their minds also, and of course create a lot of jobs for other enterprising Africans. And, and that's what we're doing. And so we're using ICT as a driver to push change, not just in Nigeria alone, but we're looking at going right into Africa. I'm in tourism and hospitality. Um, to be specific, I have an eatery, restaurant based in Zaria. And uh, apart from the fact that um, everybody has to eat one way or the other, we look out for providing convenience for people. You know, we, our business is known as Smiley's Mobile Kitchen and um, we want to bring food to you at your convenience, wherever you want it. Maybe your kids are at school, you need food to be delivered to them. We do that, events and all that. And then the fact that we can be able to employ labor, touch other lives, is something huge. Yes, over time, my own idea of commodity trading, I will take cashew for example, was born from, from my quest. You know, it, it, it was born from the regrets the, 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 the displeasure I feel when I see, you know, cash ag agricultural, agricultural commodities waste without us putting it, putting it into good use. That was where I got my inspiration from. And, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, it's an idea that is kind of multifaceted because, you know, apart from controlling the amount of agricultural waste that we are currently generating, it will also transform into, I studied the cashew value chain. I studied the cashew value chain, the export of cashew to, to Asia, for, for example, close out the value chain, process it and vacuum pack and bring it back into Nigeria. And this is something we can do. We have whatever, all, all it takes. And I've decided, I've decided to take it upon myself to be the, be the, be the, be the leader, be the, the, the novel guy, the guy that will do the, the hard work, the guy that will do the groundwork, the guy that will do the run around to be able to close this value chain so that you know, it, will be, it will be for us in Africa, by us in Africa. So I hope that in the next 10 years, as the catalyst has inspired us, I see, I see an enormous company and I see my people from the community where I've decided to set up the, the, the processing plant. I see people gainfully employed, people looking at what is the Mother Earth is giving us and transforming it into something that could be traded in the international community. Well, the South Sudan market is very new, is very small at the mo at the moment. I'm into fashion entrepreneurship, and uh, I hope that I get to put South Sudan on the map when it comes to fashion. And uh, also, I I hope that this opportunity uh, gives me the initiative to be able to inspire other women, since I come from a country that is largely patriarchal, and where women have uh, they find their voice in getting married they don't see any value in themselves and society hasn't taught them to be people who who should venture out there and get something for themselves so i hope that uh this i would act as a model to most of these women and show them that you know there is a future for them and that they can be they, they can be the next success story out there oh my business uh idea is about uh, rabbit farming uh, my company is diva bits kenya and uh, what we do actually, we actually produce rabbit meat products which are much healthier than the other meat, common meats, uh, like chicken or fish and, meat and beef, uh, because rabbit meat has actually the highest protein levels and the lowest cholesterol and calories and fats. And nowadays people are very uh, health sensitive and they want to eat more healthy products. So that's what we are going to do. And in addition, uh, we are going to be outsourcing this meat from uh, farmers. So we, we anticipate that we may work with 20,000 farmers to actually supply our meat demand. So, and that will empower farmers a lot of it. 
I am in both agriculture and manufacturing because I am making a cosmetic product, a natural cosmetic product from coffee. And uh, why we conceived this idea um, with my, the group of women I'm working with is because we felt that coffee has just been quite traditional in its use. And we thought it is a high time Africa started thinking outside the box and use its raw materials to try to create other entities and other lines of, of uh, businesses. And so we picked on coffee, which not only is grown in Kenya, is a key product uh, crop in Kenya, but also in other African countries. And we said, how can we make coffee part and parcel of uh, value chain that brings women together? And so this product is actually going to look at how we bring women much closer to coffee by using it on their skin, because coffee has very beneficial uh, effect on the skin. It uh, heals scars, it uh, has anti-aging properties, and the modern woman needs to be able to experience coffee not just through drinking, but also through using it on her skin. The, the project uses uh, women uh, in terms of uh, tapping into women producers, smallholder women producers. It also is going to use women as packers, so we are going to have a process, a value chain that is going to integrate a lot of women in its, uh, in its production. We started this product uh, in the kitchen, but now the, the seed capital that we are getting from TIP is now going to propel the, the, the kitchen manufacturing now into a more, uh, you know, bigger processing, uh, 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 you know, uh, like a facility that we are going to now be able to, be, to uh, make more products, reach more markets, and be able to now propel it within the African continent as an alternative BT uh, product. Very interesting. Thank you very much for the time. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Hey, well, um, I'm in the fashion um, industry. I'm an emerging um, African fashion designer. Um, so far, I've done um, a lot of shows um, locally and internationally. So um, getting that name out there and also um, encouraging other entrepreneurs such as myself here in Nigeria that we can, and especially the fact that I'm from the north, so it's actually a good thing for us as well. So I think, yeah. Okay, and, and for you? Yes, I'm also into fashion, but my own, the path I choose, it's something quite different because I'm into the um, African-inspired Arabian mode of dressing. Yes, whereby I take a look at the concept of the Arabians and I now infuse African fabrics into it. I've also done a fashion show last year and I also have two more. I have one in Lagos next week. Um, I'm in the fashion design sector. I'm a fashion designer, yes. And I want to use my business to help reduce unemployment in my country. Yes, that's the biggest problem we're facing. It's a lot of youths, even older people, they're not employed, don't have a source of income. So I want to help you know, increase the employment levels in my country, yes. Particularly, uh, fashion is a, an industry that can really get a lot of support in um, Africa, and even in Zambia. What are those things you want to see beyond the, the Tony Lomelu Foundation support, particularly like enabling environment by government, what are those things you'd like to see for them? The government, I don't know much that the government can do because it's been going on for a lot of years and we're not seeing any help. So I think the best, for, the best step forward is for the private sector to take charge and drive the economy in Africa because let the government deal with everything they have right now on their plate. Yeah. So my business is about food. I have a small factory that we want to promote local foods. So our focus is in local and organic food. For the moment, I have, uh, so I'm doing some juice and some snacks with uh, some local product that we have. We make some cheese, cheap chips with taro, potato taro, and we also do with plantains. But our idea is to promote all local pr food, food that we have in Congo and all in DRC. Like, because they say the food is a culture. So my idea is to the food should not stay by eating, but to transmit a culture with food in the in all Africa. This is what I have like a, an idea. Okay, uh, I'm I'm a chef. I'm a chef at the uh, university. So what we do is actually uh, we're trying to open a small restaurant at the University of Ibadan. It's called Riches, and uh, what we do is actually create uh, exquisite meals for students in the university. And uh, we don't sell the regular, exactly, um, regular meals you have around school because we know students get tired of eating the same food. So we bring in some new um, lines of cuisines, say some Chinese and um, some Italian dishes. So what we do is just you know, train the students and, and probably employ them, later employ them to become chefs. 
the in my line of duty because i started as a tv presenter i have met um, people that are undervalued underskilled and underpaid and this is not their fault is because the institution they actually uh, went to was not fully equipped and apart from that they were they weren't taught the hands-on experience which is the field experience which is most of all lacking in the industry when i started the school most of the students that came in that was what they complained about and the academy brought them that they were they went into field experience and from there i got them internship with TV stations and private stations, and some were lucky enough to get a job from there. So that's the difference, because in this filmmaking industry, everything we use upgrades, and so we have to update our knowledge, which is lacking. Once you know how to operate Canon 5D, you tell me, no, I don't have to know how to operate Sony this, Sony that. But it's necessary. You are a filmmaker. If you really want to advance in this, if you really want to make a difference, you need to know about this. If you're behind the camera, let us know you're behind the camera and you're well knowledgeable about it. If you're in front of the camera, yeah, you're in front of the camera. Most of the actresses, they keep upgrading themselves. They're not stagnant. So why should we, the one that we're bringing them to the limelight, be like stuck with don't have to be so that's the difference that Amazon Academia is bringing to the Nollywood industry and that is exactly what we actually need in the industry I am in what I call errands concede service sector we run errands I represent quick errands concede solutions limited so what we do is we provide solutions to personal planning and time management challenges by providing people with outsourced customized and specific errand services just to save them time money stress and risk because we know that this 21st century contemporary environment demands time so our solution is kind of time based so we try to help people by making things easier for them by running some certain kind of errands for them you know increasing their daily productivity and improving their overall overall uh, uh, lifestyle well i'm in the energy and power generation sector and uh, my mandate is also to synergize with uh, what the tony elimelu entrepreneurship foundation has brought out as a master plan my company has, is at the core point of making sure there will be renewable energy for nigerians free for all at a point of installation and at the last point of uh, maintenance and orders what you use you also pay for that so we want to make sure that this will be a divergent project uh, from your usual uh, centralized or conventional electricity this is far from that this is you having renewable energy installed for you at every point in time we're also looking at uh, solar hybrid. We have a project in Abuja at uh, Guzape district, and this is one of the first pilot projects that Nigerians can actually come and see how a green building can become efficient, reliable, and how it can generate electricity for as long as possible. So for me, I can say renewable energy, uh, this is the best time to harness the vast, explo uh, vast potentials that we have as a country far from the usual conventional electricity which uses gas and we know we have pipelines issues we have gas shortages and all that so nigerians over a population of 160 are also growing to a population of 170 so the point is we need to build this critical infrastructure for nigeria